Hello there and welcome to day five of the Great Guitar Build Off unofficial challenge or my entry for it. Okay so what's on the cards today? Well first of all I want to sort out these book match tops. I've let let these rest for a couple of weeks and I think they're okay. I just need to do a bit more planing to make sure the joints absolutely spot on. I want to put the uh, veneer on the headstock get that cut out and stuck on. I think I might need to route out the channel for the truss rod a bit deeper. Uh, I think there's a bit of a problem there and also think there's a bit of a bow on the neck that I've got to sort out so I'm going to deal with that. Now I've got my truss rod jig, I've got my clamping jigs ready, they're all ready to go so let's get going. I'm going to go with this side of the olive. I did try and turn it over but that's a different colour there and I didn't like that so much so I'm going to go with the other side. Now then, when I butt them together there is a little bit of a gap at each end so what I need to do is put them in the vise and just plane that flush. Pretty good. Just gonna run a leveling beam over that. Now there is a bit of a bow on this piece here, so I'm hoping that once it's stuck down, it's going to be okay. And that's. It's looking reasonable. Obviously that's going to be where the neck goes so I'm not worried about that. You've got the bridge and all the pickups around this area. You've got the single coil there. I think it's going to look pretty good. Okay I want to glue these together in the veneer clamp. Of course before this is going to fit into my uh, clamp here I'm going to have to cut off a couple of strips off the side of these pieces. I've got the two pieces cut down to size so they fit into the press. Smashing. Right, what I'm going to do is put a strip of paper down first so the glue doesn't stick to the, uh, the clamp there. Glue up the edges. Okay, that's reasonable. Just make sure I've got it all lined up correctly. That looks pretty good. Okay, I need to tighten these bolts up wipe the excess off the top there. I'm just going to rub a bit of wax on this cardboard and then use this underneath the wood just so that the glue doesn't stick to this beam. So there we go, one, two, three. Put that underneath there, underneath there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to put this to one side and let it dry, probably overnight. I'm not particularly happy with the depth of the truss rod channel so I'm going to route it down a little bit more. So I've got it in my trusty workmate. I'm going to put some uh, masking tape and silver glue. I'm going to take the truss rod channel about three mil deeper. That should do the job. Of course, 
course it helps if you plug the vacuum tube into the vacuum. Yeah, that's much better and that gives me a little bit of uh, room to just shave off the top just to level it. I've let the neck settle for, I don't know, about eight days or so and um, let's see what's happened. Ah, there's just a little bit of light up there. Yes, so there's a bit in the middle there that needs to be sorted out. Now I don't have a planer and my planing is not that accurate so I've got this jig which I can feed through the thicknesser so the way it works is the neck is secured in position using these if I can get it around the right way using these bolts which push against some aluminium pieces of metal just to protect the the side of the neck there so that grips that in so that holds a whole lot flat and I can run it through the thicknesser and just take off the top just wheel in the thicknesser you may wonder why all my tools have got plastic bags over them basically when I moved into the workshop it did leak and um, unfortunately rusted up all the base plate of the bandsaw over there which was a bit annoying so I put plastic on since then I hopefully I fixed the roof anyway I'm going to put some pencil marks on the top here so that I can see what's being taken off I really only want to just take a little bit off the top now this is a warts and all series of videos and it's all right having all these fancy jigs but uh, you've got to make sure that they actually do work properly now the problem with this jig is that the piece of wood that's supporting the neck doesn't run the whole length of the neck so when I run it through the thicknesser what's happening is the rollers of the thicknesser are pressing down and actually pressing down unevenly on each side so as a consequence to that I've ended up with a neck that's probably not as flat as it was when I started never mind into the trusty leveling beam and hopefully I can fix this So what have I learned from this? Fix the jig, Dave. That's what you need to do. Fix the jig. Okay, now then, let's see uh, what's next on the list. I've marked the shape of the headstock on this piece of olive. So what I'm gonna do now is cut it out very roughly so that I can see where it's positioned on the neck. After all that sanding, I've lost the position of the nut, so I've got to mark that back on again. So here's my neck template. Line that up there and just go down to the what will be the 22nd fret. And I've, I've just put a rough mark there. I think that's where the nut should be. Just check it against this fretboard. To be perfectly honest with you, it's the, uh, the binding that worries me more than anything else because I do need to have at least a millimetre on each side of this fretboard to allow me to put the binding on and uh, I think that's that's okay so I'm going to go with that as being the position of the nut I'll just scroll that across let's see that's going to fit there and this is going to go on to there now on the other travel guitars I've made I've actually allowed 
a bit of this fretboard to go beyond the nut and I'm, I think in this particular case I'm actually going to cut the fretboard at the nut and then run this up to it. I think that's what I'm going to do. That means I need a slope on the uh, neck in order to accommodate that. So I'm going to have to plane it. And that's where this jig may actually come in useful. So what I need to do is I need to get the headstock of the neck here sloping down so that I can fit the veneer on the top there, just like so. I'm going to cut this veneer so that it finishes just at the back of the nut. So I'm going to mark the position of the nut on, on the neck. I'm using one of these pre-cut nuts, so uh, saves a bit of time. Um, so I'll mark that. I'll mark the back of that nut position there. That's that there. I can then mark that on the veneer. And what I'm going to do then is cut the veneer down to that line. I'm having fun with the camera today. I'm switching it off when I thought I'd switched it on. So I'm afraid you miss me sanding down the end of this to the line, which is very exciting, I can assure you. Anyway, I've now got to stick this onto there and my now defunct jig, which obviously didn't do any good for the planing, may now come into use as a clamping fixture. Right, I have clamps, I have glue, I have clamping blocks. I've got a tissue. Let's rub that on. Make sure that's nice and smooth. It's all looking pretty good. Okay, so let's get some glue on the neck. Da -da -da. Now, I am just using bog standard, no nonsense, waterproof glue from Screwfix. Oops, as I've done for many years. And it seems to do the job. Okay. Okay, moment of truth. Now then. I can just see the line that I've got to work to. Of course, these slide all over the shop. I've, I've read somewhere that you can use salt to uh, stop the thing moving but um, I haven't got salt, so what I'm going to do is clamp it with one of these. That's it. That's it, so I've got glue oozing out of the, all of those joints. Right. Looks like my neck jig did come in useful after all. Let's just hang that over there. Before I pack in this evening, I thought I'd have a quick look at this jig. Now, I've taken the neck off and let it cure overnight. Now, in principle, the idea is okay, I believe. These do hold the neck in place quite nicely. There's a bit of sandpaper on the inside of those plates there. Uh, so it holds it quite tight, but this piece of wood is too short. And when I ran it through my thicknesser, what was happening was the, the rollers in the thicknesser were pushing down on the ends of the neck, which resulted in it taking off more material in the middle. So I need to redesign this. So I think I'm going to use these brackets. So I'll take these brackets off, remove this piece of wood. Now, the base piece of wood is probably a bit too big as well. What I could use is some MDF. Hey, that's a job for tomorrow. Tonight I've promised to cook our favourite meal, a Thai green curry and a pad thai. So I'm going to go and get on with that. See you in the morning. Okay, so let's see how this book match top has glued together. Let's get the right size spare. I've been watching Tamar Hanna's guitar making video for the build off and I'm absolutely in awe of her use of veneers. If you haven't seen her video, 
I'll put a link to it just above. And my favourite part of her video is the bit when she realises she's made a mistake and uh, just how she fixes it. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, this is a lot simpler than what she was trying to achieve. Hopefully they shouldn't be stuck down. No, that looks good. The uh, oh, cover wax didn't quite work on that one, but never mind, we're going to sand it off anyway. So that, I do expect the paper to be stuck on the back here. Okay, now, talking of mistakes, I noticed one of these is slightly thicker than the other one, which has caused me a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on the back of this before I can stick it down, not too much hopefully. Now I'm going to be making a bit of noise, cutting this out and then sanding it. So today I want to play a track from a band that I've been very close to for many years from Wales, a band called Colours of One, and this is a track called Echoes. Check them out on Spotify and iTunes, brilliant band. Okay, so we've got the body all sorted. I'm going to put this in this jig, my clamping jig. And we've got the hook match top, which I've sanded flush on the back. Line that up with there. All the final shaping will be done on the belt sander. Um, I've got a little problem here in that this side is a little bit higher so I'm going to put some strips of cardboard underneath this part of it just to make sure it is pressed down equally. Carefully, carefully, try not to knock that. The idea behind this jig, or fixture, whatever you want to call it, is that there's no movement, sort of lateral movement, it's just downward pressure. Okay, I'm just going to wipe the glue off this and set it to one side to set. I think I'm going to leave it overnight again. Um, there's plenty more to do though. So let's crack on. Well, literally the postman's just been and Carolyn's just brought the parsley. Here's the Shinto rasp. Excellent. So this will be ideal for shaping this neck. Great. Great tool to have. Right, let's get on with then shaping the end of this neck. Sorry guys, you're back to one of my back in track.
I'll need to do some fine sanding but for the time being that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to channel out the truss rod access now. So I just need to scoop out a small channel to allow me to get an allen key in there to adjust the truss rod. Um, so I think I'm just going to, it's just, I don't want anything too big. Let's just do something like that. Okay, so I've got a problem in that I sanded the neck down to fix a problem that I had with the planer. Now the channel for the truss rod is not deep enough, so I need to route that out again. But in order to do that, I need to fix the routing template. I can't do that because I've got this veneer on the top there. So what I've done, I've cut a couple of strips of hardboard out. I'm going to uh, super glue masking tape those there. And then the jig will fit on the top and I can just tidy up that routing. You know there are some days it just don't quite go to plan. Yesterday I forgot to switch the microphone on the camera on one section of the video which if you're watching this video now you'll obviously see I've fixed in one way or another. Today um, I'm trying to resolve a problem with the truss rod channel that was caused by me feeding the neck through a planer with a, with a jig that didn't work. So I've taped everything up ready to stick down this new template but before I do anything I'm going to have a cup of tea and, um, and then come back to it fresh. See you in a bit. Before I wrap the truss rod again I'm going to make myself another one of these because as well as being a planer jig I think it'll hold my neck secure on this desktop while I do the routing which will save me getting out the old Black & Decker workmate. So without further ado let's make this thing. that'll do the job. I'm sort of happy with the way this is going at the moment so I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I might have to just chisel out a bit more once it's all set but uh, what I'm going to do now is put some epoxy and just glue this truss rod in. That's a fiddle. 
I really like the metal truss rods in the in the aluminium uh, sort of U tube, and I've been really fascinated to watch uh, one of the other unofficial competitors, Bogdan, make his own. And um, it's really worth watching his video. He's a very clever young man. Anyway, I'll put a link above. Here we go. A little twist. Yes, it little twist. And that should hold it in place, stop it rattling. Before I glue the fretboard on, I'm just going to have to cut the fretboard at the end here where the nut's going to go. So. <laughs> Now I'm using one of these pre-cut nuts and the back of it has a slope on it so that when I put it there I'm going to have a gap between this headstock and the fretboard so I'm going to actually move the fretboard up a little bit just a touch so that I can shave the back of that nut off. What I'll do I'll mark that with a knife. I can always take some off the veneer, but I can't put anything back on the nut. Okay, so that's that position. I also now need to make sure that this is in the centre, which is much harder because I've now got the truss rod in there. I haven't got a centre mark. Never mind. Um, it's more about getting it even on each side, so I've got enough of the neck to uh, glue the binding on. I'm really tight on that side. I'm going to have to pull it over a bit. I think that will do it there. Okay, so now I'm going to drill a hole between the frets about here and then put a cocktail stick in. Okay, so I've got cocktail sticks as registration pins. You know when you get that sinking feeling that you've got you've forgotten something really important. Well, that's what I'm feeling now. I've got the fretboard lined up with the neck. Underneath it, the truss rod's been glued down with epoxy. I've got my fretboard fretboard gluing block, which I shall put on there, and then I shall strap some clamps all the way down. So I've done every other fretboard that I've ever done. Cleanup's really important if you're going to be putting binding on there's nothing worse than having to scrape the glue off once it's dried. Okay, that was another thing put to one side and left to dry. I'll leave that to dry overnight and get back to it tomorrow morning. So I think I'm going to call it a day today and uh, we'll see what we get tomorrow. Hello there. Well, these have been left to cure overnight. So I'm going to be clamping them now. Let's have a look, see what we've got. I think. This is probably going to be the end of this video. I apologise, it's gone on a bit longer than I intended. Uh, but uh, we've got plenty more stuff to do on this guitar and uh, that will be coming up in the, uh, the next few videos. Day 5 has stretched into a couple of days. Let's see what we've got. hole needs to be bigger. Okay. Okay. Well that looks pretty good. What I've got to do now is shape the guitar and I'm going to do that using the belt sander but I'm going to do that in another video. So that's the body. Let's have a look at the neck. We have a neck. 
Excellent. Brilliant. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. Well, thank you again for watching. See you soon.